put your you put your Spanish beard on today. And now, you mornings with Greg Carr and Lamont King. <laughs> you got something like that. <laughs> it's too early for All right. This next gentleman is joining us today, man. I wanted to bring this guy in, man, to talk about a, a, a few things um, that I've, I've seen recently on, on social media and in, in discussions on, on race and heritage. Uh, the brother's name is Marco Martinez, Cuban-American actor, writer, producer, and acting coach. He's the first Afro-Latino actor to play an Afro-Latino character on U.S. television, appearing on the bilingual PBS show Villa Alegra. Freelance writer for Framework Studios, uh, developed projects for Universal Television. In 2023, he penned the Netflix special Tudum, hosted by Jamie Foxx, and developed cast promos for a major Disney Marvel movie. Uh, U.S. Army veteran, he was an intelligence analyst for the 156th Military Intelligence Battalion, uh, became a principal member of the Roadside Theater in Germany, just on and on and on and on accolades and accomplishments. Please welcome to the program, Marco Martinez. What's good with you, good brother? Hey, hey, brother. hey brother Marco. How you doing? Man? How y'all doing? Doing well, man. How you feel? I, I'm I'm feeling I'm feeling okay. It's, it's six a.m. out here in the West Coast. You see how dark it is back here? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Sir. y'all got y'all got that East Coast bias. It's all good, dog. I'm yeah, of course. Here, man. <laughs> we, we try to get to late in the program. You know, six a.m. is 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 good. <laughs> As, as, as ice tea it's oh. <laughs> yeah. I need to be up anyways, and I and it's good to be up with you guys because uh, mm. you guys do a lot of a lot of great things on this show. So happy to be appreciate here. appreciate that. Appreciate Thanks you. for taking appreciate the time. All right, so yeah, I saw something. I saw a post yeah. um, that you that you uh, put on LinkedIn a yeah. few days ago regarding uh, a, an award ceremony that you were a part of, uh-huh. um, and it was celebrating the works of Afro so called. Afro Latinos, your cousins, yeah, yeah, from right, down right below the border, yeah. And so, what I wanted to do was kind of have a larger discussion on that very thing because, yeah, I, I was watching on Instagram. Um, I think it was a Puerto Rican Day parade, mm-hmm. and there was a rapper who was in a Lamborghini truck, and the police mm-hmm. arrested him, right? Mm-hmm. And so, in the comment section, because I live in the comment section, uh, comment section, people yeah. were saying, "Oh." Now you know it was a Dominican uh, rapper. Yeah. A Dominican got rapper? arrested. Yeah. I forgot <laughs> his name. Puerto Rican Day Parade. Okay. Yeah, the, right. Okay. Okay. They said, now you know what it feels like to be black. Uh-huh. Because he got arrested. <laughs> right? <laughs> Joke. Mm. Ha, ha, ha. But then the comments went yeah. all. Yeah. Dominicans, we're not black. It's Dominican. That, yeah. You know, and and I have run into this uh, often with yeah. many people of Dominican descent that I've met over the years, and a lot of them, depending on their skin tone, yeah. say the same thing. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. on this question, on this show, you know, Dr. Carr is a master teacher, master historian. Mm-hmm. We also we we often talk about you know that that. Afro-Cuban, Afro-Latino co- connection. Um, they just got dropped off earlier, you know, yep. on, on the boat. And yep. and just the kind of misinformation culturally that we get, um, you know, currently. And, and to bring it full circle, even now, how it's used as a tool to divide Oh yeah, what is oh, yeah. considered a black and brown coalition. So I wanted yeah. you to kind of bring, you know, you 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 a subject matter expert by by way of existing. Oh, wait. <laughs> so and you're in Hollywood and you're in the industry and and you deal with it and have dealt with it. So I wanted to kind of bring you on to kind of facilitate and and give us some perspective on that on that discussion and why it is that some Afro Latinos who have African blood still associate or or prefer proximity to whiteness. Sure, sure. Oh, yeah, that's a big thing. Um, you know, I know you know Ida Rodriguez. Uh, she's like my sister. We talk about uh, proximity to whiteness all the time. She has a bit on it. Um, that is a big thing. I, I will say this because there's there's so much to unpack here. So let me do it without yeah. you know Take your doing time. too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I will say that that yeah, obviously I'm not 
Dominican, but I am very um, aware of Dominican culture. I'm gonna just I'm gonna just do a couple things really quick. So, in the DR, you know, DR for many people that don't know, it shares an island with Haiti, right? So, in the DR, uh, many many years ago, there was a president named Trujillo, and Trujillo was having um, a, a genocide against Haitians. Anybody of Haitian blood. Anybody that was looked Haitian could be Haitian. Uh, they were they were just rounded up and killed. Mm. And and in in the Dominican Republic, it was a war against Haiti, and then it was a war against people of Haitian descent in the Dominican Republic. So Trujillo did a number on people because he people would say he would say to Dominicans, "Oh, but we're not, you know, African." Right, we're not Haitian, we're not African, we are Indian, either the Taino, mm, Taino, or whatever. Yeah. yeah, it mm -hmm. is. And for survival, people need to understand this. People had to say, I'm Taino. Mm. You know, you, you couldn't you couldn't be like if you you could be militant, but then you'd be dead. Mm -hmm. So so that that had gone on for a while and we're talking about generations of people they would have kids they would tell their kids hey hey you're Taino right hey don't don't say that what's happening now though is that, so that's that's a cultural that's a that's an like a learned uh, a defense mechanism behavior right. anti-blackness mm -hmm. there uh, specifically that island is Cuba we have our own problem um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but then now you're seeing a lot of, of, you know, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of Dominicans. I know Adarisa, uh, by the way, she was one of the actresses that was, uh, that was uh, with me getting an award. Uh, she is very much about her blackness. You know, mm -hmm. Ida is very much about her blackness, her African roots, right? Um, uh, she's half to me. And and so I will say this, that there is a confusion here. See, in the U.S., right, everything is about race. When you live outside Correct. the U.S., you're not, nobody identifies you by race outside of these 50 states, right? Um, and me having lived abroad and in and, and Cuba for a little bit, um, they don't say, oh, look, Lamont, the, the black guy. They would say, yeah. oh, Americano, oh, you, yeah. you're American. Moreno you know, and Dr. Carr, yeah, Moreno, maybe, yeah. yeah if if they want to get deeper, if into if your, yeah, right, yeah. describe yeah. me to describe yeah, yeah, me, yeah, yeah. But you guys are American. You step American. in any of those countries, you're, you're Americans, and so we know. Like if I'm talking to a Dominican or or to somebody to describe a Dominican, I'll say, oh yeah, Dominicana or, or Boricua, you know, Puerto Rican. We we are mm -hmm. very much culture. Outside the U.S. is very much culture. Like Europeans don't go, oh, white people. They go, oh, the German, or mm -hmm. you know, yeah. oh, he's from London, right. or oh, Italiano, you know, uh, Siciliano. So, but here, um, because of you know uh, many many years of chattel slavery, we 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 you you know chattel slavery, we we say white, mm -hmm. black, and then everything else right. from the fringes, right? And that's done for a reason. So. I think when people go, oh, you say you're not black. So black here in the U.S. is not just a race; it's a culture, right? Mm. So when you go, Marco, you black. I say, well, I'm 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 Afro-Cuban to to let you know my culture because that's my culture. Um, yeah. I, I I'm not African American like you are African American. I would be African of the Americas, right? But mm -hmm. you know, and then. You know, you guys also have, not you guys, but there's also a yeah. group here. Um, I'm not going to say their name because I don't want to give them, but there's a group here that says, oh, you don't, you're not part of us. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And, we know and, those and, 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 Yeah, we, we don't. <laughs> so, but, but here's the thing. If you ask me, you say, you know, um, Black causes, Black, you know, things that affect Black people, it very much affects me mine and i very much am someone you know and i know a lot of latinos from from puerto rico cuba dominican republic that are very much pro-black in the sense that we want to uplift all black people not just dominicans cubans puerto ricans you know what i mean so right. if something affects right. affects you it then affects me so 
that's the thing. The racing culture, and I know you guys have known this, that that's the the confusion, you know. Um, when you call a Puerto Rican is very proud. So they mm -hmm. go, I'm Boricua, Puerto Rican, right? Right. right. Are, are you black, when you say that to Puerto Rican us, you have to understand what you're saying is, are you black American? Right? Is that your culture? Because we don't yeah. identify race, you know, in, in Latin America. We don't go by that first. So I just want to tell people when, when you say, we know we're black. Like if I see, yeah. if I'm in any of those countries you mentioned, we already know we're black. I don't need to say I am black Cuban. I'm just saying I'm Cubano. But, does, like they know. Brother Marco, does, 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 does the society there, whether it be Cuba, Dominican yeah. Republic, or Brazil. I'm thinking about uh, Carlos Moore, the Afro, uh, yeah. uh, right? Well, P is it Pichon? Is that, I think yeah. that's the name of his Pichon, memoir. Yeah. I mean, his idea that you know, even during the Castro Revolution, they said, "Well, we don't have racism here." Oh no, you have racism. Oh, we have racism. But I mean, the Spanish-speaking and Portuguese-speaking world like like to do that, right? I mean, so yeah. how do we grapple with that question? Well, wait, look, so, racism. So somebody like Ricky. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but um, Dr. Carr. No, I just want to mention one other thing because when yeah. the uh, uh, Desi Arnaz back in the 50s, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I didn't know as a kid when he's on I Love Lucy right. with that concert singing Babalu, he's Babalu. basically giving us, a, yeah, he's giving us a Yoruba ritual that is commonplace yeah. in Cuba, but he's a white Cuban. So yeah. mm. I'm like, wait a minute, you just took something from Afro Cuban culture and gave it to the world. They think it's, you just performed in a nightclub. No, that's that's cultural. Anyways, can well, you help well, us? Well, 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 let's not stop at let's not stop at Baba Lua. Yeah, let me, you know, you don't talk <laughs> about Africa. Listen, most Latin culture, right? And we're talking about the Caribbean and parts of South America. Everything that you can think of, right? Like uh, the 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 salsa dancing, those are uh, rituals as well. Left foot first, <laughs> for right foot back, right? That mm. that comes from African ritual. Our, so our cultures are blended in Africanism already. Most of some, a lot of Cuban language now in Cuba, not Miami, you know, here, but in Cuba has a blend of Yoruban and Spanish, right? Mm -hmm. New words that have been created through Yoruban and Spanish. Our culture has always been that. Um, we've, we always, uh, uh, we have something like my house called the Bovida, where, where I acknowledge my ancestors. It's just water, you know, it's a cross, it's a Bible, but it's, you know, every morning before I leave the house, I have to acknowledge my ancestors. That's a thing mm -hmm. that a lot of us do, right? Um, you know, a lot of us, I, I know you know the religions, Ifa, Santeria, that come, that's from straight from Yoruban culture. Because Cuba yeah. had an influx of Yorubans that went to that island more than almost any other African culture, you know what I mean, a group. So when you, so, so yeah, so Desi, um, Desi was in a band in Cuba and you know back then you were black you couldn't there were things you couldn't do you weren't going to come over here and be on TV and be a star so Desi was singing a song uh Asohano is Baba Luaye he is uh uh Baba Luaye is Asohano the closest I can get to it um for you to understand would be uh Lazarus okay mm -hmm. San Lazaro um, and that that is uh, uh, a, a, a santo, you know, a, a Yoruban deity. Um, mm -hmm. And that is a song. Yeah, you're right. You know, um, but, you know, Celia, Celia Cruz was a oh, was, she started singing um, at Yoruban parties and rituals. She was a Santera singer. Her and this lady named La Lupe. That's how they got big. And they and they, they came over. So you see a lot of that. But I'll, I'll just say that that. What I was saying is everything that you th that's hot. If you've been to a Cuban restaurant, a Dominican restaurant, a Puerto Rican restaurant, you've eaten African food. Correct. Spaniards 100%. didn't eat. Spaniards yeah. didn't eat mofongo. They didn't eat platano maduro. They didn't eat. You know, the, that's all African food, right? Yeah. It, yeah. It, Africanism is blended into our culture, and yes, there is a lot of anti-black. There's a lot of anti. You know, there's a lot of uh, uh, proximity to whiteness because. We've been living under colonialism and everybody wanted to mm. be like the Spaniards so they didn't have to suffer like the dark ones did, right? That mm. That is mm. not just, that's everywhere. I mean, here in the U.S., you have light skin, black, dark skin. I mean, there's always been some kind of division. Everywhere there's been colonialism in the world. And we're not just talking about the Latin America. There has been this, this 
groupings, groups of people, whether it's in Africa, you know, we saw it in, uh, um, uh, what's uh, the movie with Don Cheeto? What's the country, you know, the, the hotel, Rwanda. Hotel Rwanda. Rwanda. That, yeah, was, yeah. that was colonialism left and you had these two groups, they were pitted against each other for hundreds of years and then they, you know, uh, you, you have it in Brazil. You have, obviously, and there's a lot of, there's a lot more black people right. in Brazil than, than other countries. So, I'll just say this, look, in, in Cuba, by the way, I'm sorry, I, I'm trying to answer up. Cuba, by the no, way, this is good. People this is, need no, this, to is, stop. Yeah, this is a history people lesson. People right need here. to stop with the Fidelisms. Let me tell you, Fidel, if Fidel was so great, no one can name one black prominent person in this cabinet or the the life of black people in Cuba. Um, how was it during the Fidel years? I can tell mm-hmm. you it wasn't great. Okay. Mm-hmm. It wasn't great. You don't see um, you don't see historical figures that fought against the Spaniards in Cuba. You know, you see like um, well, but wait a know, minute. But why is yeah. that if if everybody's just Cuban? Well, I mean, other than maybe like say uh, Antonio Machado, maybe Brass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marcel, Marcel, Marcel was light skinned and as you and if you see him in books, he keeps getting lighter. I mean, he's Marcel was like Michael Jackson. He started off like a complexion, and then at the wow. end, he looks like you know the barge. So it just that's crazy. Listen, I well, it. so let me let me let me get to you. So yeah. before Fidel, by the way, there was a president there, and you know people can say whatever they want about him. Um, Hugencio Batista, he was mixed. Okay, uh, he was what we call mulatto, you know, something like that, and he was president of Cuba. He was on his second term. He was an elected president first time. Then there was someone else, you know, and then he, he came back later. People say, eh, maybe he wasn't elected, whatever, but he was, there were elections then. There was um, a lot of people in the wealthy class that didn't want him as president anymore for a variety of reasons. I can tell you that one of the reasons had to do with his race, because a lot of U.S. politicians, specifically from the South, were going to Cuba back then. And oh, they, didn't want to, they didn't want to deal with a color. Well, no, we were right here in the U.S. You, you, you know, you had Jim Crow. So they wanted Jim yeah. Crow in Cuba. And he was yeah, like, no, yeah, Cuba, yeah. Cuba for Cubans. Right. And so right. we had our own little January 6th thing going on. That's how we got Fidel Castro. And I won't even say who the man oh, is. Oh, that's I'm blaming, interesting but I, take on it. Well, no, but let's let's get real. There, there were there are, you know, and I know people, you know, there are one of the things that i'd like to do is is you know i've spent a lot of time in cuba and i and i and i you know one of the reasons i i pursued my masters in public policy and administration is cuz i always thought that maybe i'd have an opportunity to go back and help and support or do some good in the country mm-hmm. right and i studied a lot there of that of that country and i can tell you that um, the overthrow of batista was was with the united states help it was from the wealthy Cubans who wanted um, someone else. And um, when they got Fidel, because remember, Fidel lived, and you've heard the stories, minor league baseball, lived, oh, yeah. in, New York, lived in New York. And a girlfriend in New York. His, his girlfriend yeah. was in New York, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah he was there. Yeah. Um, eventually, they got money for him. He was in, uh, that's when he met Che in, in Mexico when they were training and things of that nature. Um, that doesn't happen without the U.S. and it doesn't happen that wealth, wealthy people, um, you know, requesting that. And so then, you know, Fidel got to uh, to Cuba eventually. And by the way, he, he was not a fighter. His brother was. Fidel was mm-hmm. never someone to take up arms. But he uh, he went there and then he kind of, you know, fooled everyone and said, hey, mm-hmm. by the way, I'm not going to be a puppet. Get out. So he was like our Trump. Mm. All right. So Fidel. <laughs> Oh so, yeah, we, so, you, you definitely got to come back. We got to have conversations. So, about so I'll just say, yeah, so, yeah, saying, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That, uh, the black, Valier, who uh, black embraced culture, Baudouin, was more yes, culturally yes, Valier, yes. Black okay, culture okay. is so, prevalent. So you would make that comparison between Bautista and Duvalier? You would make a comparison no, between? I would not make it. No, no, no. Because I'm, I'm talking about had... strictly on the cultural, on the cultural set. Because, yeah. because again, Papa Doc was all about that Baudouin. Yeah, but but with Batista, Cogencio was um he was polarizing in many ways without it having to do with his race. 
Um, mm. you know what I mean? And, mm. and, and, and mm-hmm. but, but ultimately mm-hmm. it was his race that was, you know, there were, there were people saying, you know, abajo con el negro, you know, down with the black, black guy, right? Oh, of course. You have to remember, yeah. it, Cuba is like the United States. It has its white Cubans, its black Cubans, it has Asian Cubans, Correct. it has a lot of mix, it has a lot of Tainos that mix with, you don't really see them anymore in indigenous, but they, they mix with mm. a lot of folks and they tend to live in outside of La Habana. So Cuban is a, is a, is a, almost like a melting pot, but at the same time, you know, we, we all, they all got together to fight against the Spaniards. So you have white and black fighting to get mm-hmm. rid of colonialism together. Um, and that's, that's, so, you know, so yeah. fast forward, fast forward to now. And, and yeah. that's, that's the point that I yeah. want to kind of get into yes, please. Uh, good. visually to listening to you, right. Yeah. There's people listening. They don't see you, <laughs> yeah. but visually you're, you're the <laughs> black guy. Yep. You, you present, you, you look, you 100%. know, as I, Yes. And and so, but you 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 have historical knowledge, you have cultural knowledge, but you're in a space in Hollywood as an mm-hmm. actor and a producer yeah. that's built on surface. Yeah. It's built on optics it's, and it's also built on division. Sure. So how how have you been able to 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 navigate that space and what it means to to be, for lack of a better word, a, a minority talent? Or, uh, you know, what roles do you get to go out as, a, as an Afro-Latino? Are you restricted? Sure. Are you like, what is that like being in the industry? Well, no. So so they obviously don't write a lot, you know, they, a, a lot for Afro-Latinos, right? Like, you know, I was on Hentified not too long ago playing a Dominican. And then, you know, on uh, played opposite Gary Sinise, I played a, a, a Colombian. Afro-Colombian, mm. and, and those are great. Mm-hmm. That, those are great opportunities to do that. But, you know, it's a great question, Lamar. I, I have um, specifically, you know, when you're talking about subject matter expert expertise, I specifically, when I'm writing or I'm producing, I'm producing something now with Mellow Man Ace, who's the first, uh, who's Afro-Cuban rapper. He's actually from Cuba, born there. And he was, uh, his brother, Sendog, from... Uh, uh, Cypress Hill. Cypress Hill, yeah, yeah. He started okay. Cypress Hill with his brother. I just want people people didn't know that, but but Mello and Be Real and I, we we are um, working on a project about the how Latin hip hop started, the origins, and then moved into reggaeton. So what I'm doing is, I'm I'm trying to develop projects that stay in the Afro Latino space mm. um, because they never have been. Right. It, it's it's crazy that, that when you mentioned it, that I am the first Afro Latino to play one on American television. You know, mm. what I, mean? I ain't 60. I ain't you know, I'm not. You <laughs> right. know what I mean, I'm not yeah, right. 80, 90. Uh, but back yeah. then they didn't let you speak Spanish and be black. You couldn't do it. You had to stay in your space. We've mm-hmm. we've always we meaning Afro Latinos have always had to play Af- um, African-American. Right. Yeah. Um, and if you can't do, if you, if you had the accent, then you couldn't do it. Um, so I, 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 you know, I, I read for, for African-American roles and, and my, but my reps know that, that I want to represent my culture, not because I don't like African-Americans. Cause when I, when I am repping, you know, black American roles, whatever the role is, I put a lot of work into it and I put a lot of, you know, respect into it. Right. I, I know what black Americans have done, um, for film and television i try to honor that as much as i can and i respect mm. that um it, it, i'm here in this country by the way because of the, the your forefathers because of what they fought for and civil rights and all that and let my parents come here um mm. so I, I honor and respect that every day that's part of my you know when i was talking about my boba that i give thanks to all of your ancestors too so mm. so yeah i i um you know, definitely, um, you know, I've told my reps and they know, hey, I want to re- represent my culture. Obviously, there's not a lot of black Cuban stuff on TV, but right. I want to represent Afro, Afro Latinos, because back in the days, man, they had zero Afro Latino mm-hmm. role. We didn't even exist. We only we like to joke. If you want to um, 
watch Afro Latinos on TV turn on Major League Baseball because that's the only time you can see. Oh, there, there it you is. I mean? People Art forget Atlanta. we exist yeah. until you turn yeah. it on. Armando Cordosa, well, you know. Yeah, I was just yeah. in Manny Moto from the Dodgers the other day at that. Oh, were you? There. Yeah, we we was. Are you the serious? Leg- the great yeah. Manny Moto. Yeah, mm-hmm. Manny and I, uh, we were part of the group that got the the at Legacy Award by this Afro Latino uh, Association, but. But, uh, and he's and he's a, a legend, but he's such a gracious man, Dominican man, by the way, who loves his blackness. So, <laughs> let me yeah. just say, we had a brief conversation, and he loved Elvis Nolasco, who's a great actor. He's on the show with uh, Forrest right now. Uh, mm-hmm. Another Dominican who, who got the award loves his blackness. I just uh... want to tell people. We not anti black. Yeah. I gotta yeah. say this really quick, and I know I'm taking up time, but hold on. No, that's man. beautiful, man. No, no. When I was in, and when I when I came to L.A. from New York, right, there weren't a lot of black Latinos out here, by the way, at all. There's a group of us that came, moved from the Bronx out of here. Rest went to New Jersey and Florida, right? Mm-hmm. But when I came out here and I was going to school, they put me in what is called ESL class because English is a second language, right? Because I had an accent. It was pretty bad, and I and I only spoke Spanish, right? Um, but I remember this is tough, man. I remember the black kids gave us a hard. Oh, time. of course, of course. Let we me did. tell you. Yeah. It, 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 let me tell we you back then. Yeah, oh, y'all had. Jo- this is why I learned a joke, y'all. I was called African booty scratch. Booty scratch. That's I the was one. told I was going to hell because we was in the voodoo. I was, yeah, oh. I was, I was, and, 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 and this was a, and, 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 and back then, not now, back then there was an anti-African kind of, you know, absolutely in, in, like, you in know, America. still yeah. not, yeah, not like they, it they did. Yeah. It wasn't until I didn't see it change until, you know, the eighties when the rappers come out with the medallions and red, black yeah, and green yeah, and, the, yeah, sure. you know what I mean? But, but man, that was tough growing up. And I'll tell you, Thambodes, you talk about Babalu. My, my mom used to have, uh, my parents used to throw the, uh, they used to throw the first, they threw the first Cuban um, festivals in LA and Griffith Park back in the day. Oh, wow. And, and some black people come by and they, you know, listen and jam out. We had everybody coming. We had Tito Puentes, Celia would come. Tito Puentes! Everybody <laughs> that was, there was Latino. Yeah. If you were in LA around, you would come because that's the, you know, um, sure. it sure. would, it, you, you would have, uh, and, but I know some black people were like, what? What y'all doing over there? What y'all like African? What, what, what's we over here? We over here being, being Spanish, being black hey. Spanish. Hey, hey, we got we got to yeah. take a quick break. Uh, you got a little time? We're gonna take I a quick break. Let's go. And, and when we come yeah. back, when yeah, we come back, I want, you talk, I want you to talk about the Legacy Awards, and I also want you to uh, start some shit on here too, because I know there's a conversation uh, on social media about hip hop and who started it. Oh, I'm gonna no, get it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get okay. your thoughts on that on the way you know out. I'm from uh, the Bronx, so you know yeah, I know, I know. All Marco right, Martinez right. is joining us on Urban View Mornings with Dr. Greg Carr, oh. Lamont King, and you back in a second. <laughs> More from Urban View Mornings Sorry, after this on Sirius XM Urban View. You, oh wait a minute. All right, fellas, all clear. Two and a half minutes. Yeah, you can um, you can you can give the safe short answer. I just you know on the on the way out, I just want to throw that throw that shot across the bow. I'm gonna tell you right uh, now. Somebody somebody came out recently trying to shut down KRS One. No, leave, yeah, with Jamar. Leave KRS alone. Yeah. He is a legend. Yeah, absolutely. He is a I legend. Agree. Without yeah. KRS One, who knows where we'd be? But I'm gonna tell you right now, and I'm gonna say when I'm on the air. Everybody knows from the Bronx, the person who started the whole scratch and hip hop movement started, remember, with turntables at parties back in old Bronx buildings, was a Jamaican immigrant by the name That's of cool her. Clive Campbell, DJ yeah. Cool Herc. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, so, he okay. So typically, most common scholars. He's a founder. Get, he's like, yeah, he, get, he gets 90 the seconds. He gets the credit, but there's a new argument saying yeah. that. That that Latin specifically. No, 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 no. That's not hip hop would not said. be. That's not what KRS would said. not be if not for them. That's not what KRS said. He didn't. He didn't K- say if not. What he say? K- 
KRS was talking about the contributions by like the rock, the 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 rock. I mean, until we come back, yeah, it, it the, wouldn't the be if, if not for them. Yeah. But that was Rocksteady went and took hip hop. All right, we 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 go, we, go, oh, we gonna do right, that. We, we talk. We go. Make it quick. It's, a, it's like a seven minute segment, so we're gonna do that. Uh, yeah, right. we, yeah. Keep close out with the legacy thing. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I appreciate you. Now this is good rap. <laughs> this is right up our alley. Right. By the way, remember, I think it, her name, I'm not going to say it right, Imayatsi or whatever. I, I, yeah, Imayatsi, big. She's big. I know she's big, but you know she's Afro Latino. Right? 30 seconds. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that okay. when I met her. Yeah. Okay, okay. She's I, did, I didn't it. know that. Every time I, I look that. up, I see her. Jesus, man. We were in a film like Karen, Imayatsi, you. What uh, is she like, Brazilian? No, I think she's Panamanian. Oh, Afro Panamanian. Panamanian. Yeah. All right, fellas, 10 seconds remaining. All right, here we go. Now back to Greg Carr and Lamont King on Urban View Mornings. All right, back at it, y'all. Urban View Mornings with Dr. Greg Carr, Lamont King. Everybody holding on the lines. I appreciate y'all. We're going to try to get to, to y'all uh, as we wrap up this conversation with Marco Martinez, Afro Cuban, Hollywood actor, producer, writer, activist, historian. He checks all the blocks. He is all the things. Now, very quickly, uh, recently I saw o- online, there's this discussion. Uh, KRS-One had a clip where he was talking about the contributions of, of Latinos in hip hop and saying, if not, essentially I'm paraphrasing, if not for them, hip hop, there would be no hip hop today. Lord Jamar came back and say, yo, uh, respectfully, you the legend, but fall back on that, you know, calm it down. It's not the case. So I'm going to ask uh, you, Marco Martinez, uh, uh, who's a, a hip hopper himself. There was a time. I had a record. Uh, I had a record he, out. You were signed. I was who, signed. Who, who gets the credit? Is that an accurate statement? Do we, When we talk about 50 years and okay. there was no Latin representation throughout that whole okay. celebration. Okay. Do, it, 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 is, is that fair? Do you call bullshit on that? Do you, do you, do you feel like y'all was left out? All right, let me do this real quick. Repeat the statement that that Paris. If if, says. if not for the Latino contribution, there wouldn't be no hip hop, or it wouldn't be what it is today. That's basically okay. what he was saying. Okay, if not for Latino contributions in hip hop, it wouldn't be what it is today. That is correct. If you're saying if not for Latinos, it wouldn't be hip hop, that would probably not be correct. What mm-hmm. people have to understand, I know we were talking offline, is Hip hop was started. I'm, I know I'm gonna say the Benjamin Franklin or maybe even the George Washington, maybe before that of of hip hop, Clive Campbell, Jamaican dude named DJ Cool. Yeah, Cedric and, 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 and before anyone in any other state outside of the in any other borough outside of New York knew about it, it was Cool Herc in these abandoned buildings throwing these parties because he had come from Jamaica and, and that's what they used to do out there. They used to throw these they parties. They talk over the record, yeah. And they yeah. talk over the record yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, and put the scratch. And guess who was in those parties mostly? Because it was the Bronx, Puerto Ricans. And it was mm. a bunch of Puerto Ricans. I'm not even going to say Cuban or Dominican. I'm going to say Puerto Ricans that were there with him and everybody else and Sugar Hill and all those guys. They were all together. This was in... The black and, and the Ricans in New York were like this. People need yeah, to yeah, get brothers. Black correct. Benji, yellow Cold Benji. Crush. Yeah, all that. Yeah, Cold yeah. Crush. Look at no Cold Crush. Listen, and then and then when 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 Rocksteady came around, right? The Rocksteady crew and, and, and breakdancing, they took hip hop global. Cause I mean, you gotta remember there's a documentary on it. Block Rocksteady went to Europe, they went all over the world dancing you know uh break dancing and and that made kids in a lot of countries tune in to hip-hop be like oh what is that oh that's rap before the rap song like but before they even heard rap they saw rock steady crew right and so you know th- there's listen we don't have to divide each other man right, right. yeah like yeah. 
And we're I wanted not, you to take that. I wanted you to take the safe answer. Listen, answer we're not the that's, that's dominant to culture. Do. Yeah. First of all, yeah. leave KRS alone. He's a hip hop yeah. god. <laughs> um, he is. And without, and I'm not saying the best. I don't rate artists like that. There is no best to me. But I'll say this: um, he's a hip hop legend. God, he's done so much for hip hop behind the scenes that people don't even know about. For artists, when they weren't getting paid, when they weren't being respected, it was KRS-One that was showing up for people at record companies, and it wasn't even his record company. So leave, and it was yeah. Black Arts. Leave KRS-One alone. Yeah. He knows mm -hmm. more about hip-hop than, than all of us combined. That guy is, is, mm -hmm. is, is his mind, okay? And then, mm -hmm. lastly, I don't want to separate us, man. Cuban, Black, you know, Afro-Cuban, Afro-Latino, Black, uh, Puerto Rican, we need to be united. You see that's stuff right. that's going on. You see what they're trying to do with this Project 2025. You see, like, no folks are trying to, they're not going, oh, we're just going to get the Black people and leave the Puerto Ricans yeah. and Cubans. Go. No, yeah. they're getting, a, they're trying to get all of us, man. So we, yeah. listen, love the art, appreciate it for what it is. Hip hop has been mm -hmm. great. It's been great to me. I love it. I love, um, all mm. those folks, Cool Herc, mm. Sugar Hill, Grandmaster mm. Flash, Grandmaster Cass. I love them all. Thank them all for it. And yeah. I'm gonna just leave it at that. And and that black yeah. and brown coalition in, in a yeah. number of so many ways is imperative and is necessary for our survival in this country. Um and to that yes. point, uh, as we close, can you briefly talk about the legacy awards that you were part of uh mm. not too long ago? Yeah. Uh yeah, so you know, there's uh, an Afro Latino California. There's there a, there's an Afro Latino um, nonprofit out through California, and and they're trying to um, raise awareness and, and identify um, you know contributions, not just in the arts, but by Afro Latinos that that haven't been recognized and aren't recognized. I think Sharon Cruz or Nate she's the uh, uh, she's, uh, I think her dad is Puerto Rican, her mom's African American. She's the executive director, and she brought together, like I said, me, Ida Rodriguez, uh, uh, Gina, Gina Torres, uh, mm, Manny, yeah. Manny, yeah, Gina Torres, she's great, uh, Afro Cuban yeah. from the Bronx, uh, uh, Elvis Nolasco, Manny Moda, uh, Missy, oh, Ada Hisa. The actress and I'm gonna miss somebody I know and I'm gonna get cussed out but uh, <laughs> I am but she brought together this group um to acknowledge us for our you know um opening doors you know um and, and being there uh as Afro Latino you know before Latin was Latino was sexy you know I was trying to get roles trying to write stuff yeah I was a kid but I was trying to open doors and let people know hey we exist you know what I mean? And then I got an opportunity. So I think that for me um, was was a, an honor to be, you know, um, acknowledged um, for that and, and, and for what I've tried to do, not just for Afro Latinos, but for Black people, Black Americans as well, as far as, you know, representation and create opportunities for, for all of us. Um, so, yeah, so that was that was an honor. And I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for that. Outstanding. Well, Marco Martinez, uh, Hollywood hey. heavy hitter behind the scenes. Uh, yeah. Appreciate you for spending some time with us, man, and just and shooting yeah. the shit and kicking it. And I uh, appreciate you. We'd love to have you back. Uh, you know when we yeah yes sir run this run this conversation back. You know what yeah, I mean. Sir, let me let me just say one thing. Go look at the movie Moonlight again if you ever seen it. Um, mm -hmm. Mahershala's role that was initially offered to me. It, Mahershala's role is uh, he's an Afro Cuban. That's what I worked yeah. on. So now when wow. you look at that movie, you can't tell if he's African American, African. He's an Afro Cuban guy. That that yeah. was his role. So I just wanted to say that to let yeah, you know yeah, the yeah. difference between us is like this. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Right. Yeah. Small. You see? Marginal. Yeah. Very, yeah. very small. Yeah. Wow. All right. We 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 yeah. love all black. No there question. it is. <laughs> no appreciate question. you, man. <laughs> yes, sir. Appreciate, appreciate you. All right, yes, too. sir. All right, we're going to take right, a uh, quick break and then close the show out with some of your phone calls. Thank you for being patient, hanging on, and tuning in to Urban View Mornings with Dr. Greg Carr and Lamont King. This is Urban View Mornings, weekdays from 7 to 10 a.m. East on Sirius XM Urban View, where talk empowers and becomes action.